Hello, everyone. Welcome to New Music News. This is Ben Wigo, and today's guest is Jeffrey James. What's up, Jeffrey? What's up, Ben? How you doing, man? I'm good. So before we get on to the show, I just want to let everyone know that they should definitely follow my Spotify and my Indie Heartbreak playlist, as well as my Crying playlist. Whatever playlist you like, go check it out. And my Instagram is New Music Muse and Ben Wigo. And go follow Jeffrey as well and stream his music. Where are you from and what got you into music? I'm from uh, central Indiana originally, a little town called Brownsburg. Um, but I've been, I've lived in Nashville, Tennessee now for like, man, 15 years or so. So I'm, I'm, I'm basically a Nashvilleian, uh, Tennessean. Uh, but yeah, my family is kind of what got me into music. We were always like the weird, like, partridge i don't know if you know who the, who the partridge family is uh but like the family in, in the in the long car rides doing like singing like three-part harmony it's like beatles songs in the car uh so we were always just saying and that was just always a part of my life that's kind of what got me my love of music how do you like nashville like how is it there nashville's great man it's it's uh i mean it's it's a big music city in a very small town you know it's like it's is a joke if you go to la like you know, every waiter and bartender is a, wants to be an actor or as a writer and like, or as an actor, you know, and then in Nashville, it's the same way. We're like all the bartenders and waiters and everyone in town is basically a musician just waiting to like get on stage. Yeah, for <laughs> so sure. It's, it's a real great place to uh, hone your craft, you know? Yeah. And meet a lot of different artists and yeah, network sure. for sure. Was there like a specific moment that you realized that you wanted to pursue music as a career? I went to school and was like a, like a business major, basically. I was like, oh, maybe I'll like work in the entertainment world, but like just on the business side. And I end up being surrounded by a bunch of like performers and entertainers. And I was like, ah, oh, man, I think this is all I want to do, actually. I'm really jealous of what these guys are doing. Um, and I had already been playing guitar and, and writing my own songs since high school. And so it was kind of a switch that like freshman year of college. And I was like, oh, wait, this is, I just want to sing. So I read a little bit about your Spotify, on your Spotify bio that you were working for a TV show called Songland and you worked with Ryan Tedder. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on an episode of season two of Songland that came out last last May, I think. And um, they had selected a song of mine. If, if anyone doesn't know what the show is, you basically four songwriters pitch their song to whatever the artist of the week is the artist of that episode um and then three of those songs get picked to then be kind of re-recorded and re rewritten a little bit with three of the biggest um songwriters and producers today which are the, the options are uh ryan tedder like you said um esther dean and shay mcanally and if you look them up between the three of them they've, i mean they have to have like a couple hundred billboard chart songs um so my song was picked um and i got to kind of rework it and re-record it with with ryan tedder which was awesome because he's just he's a maniac and how fast he works and how um how well he works and it was just kind of a master class for me of like oh he's working at this level all the time so i need to do that too and i just learned as much as i could from him yeah that must have been like a really great learning experience because he's so like experienced in the music industry and he's written like a million songs oh my gosh yeah. yeah everything from like rolling in the deep to you know uh halo like all it's just everything it, it was great and again like you know i was working on my one song but he was working on like my song and three other songs every day yeah. we were filming multiple episodes and it was just like man he works at such a high level um and it really motivated me to really like try to push my my skills up there you know How would you describe your style of music? I think it's just pop. I'm kind of a, um, I'm kind of a pop crooner, I think, because I'm just like low baritone voice, you know, not quite the, uh, the, the high tenor, you know, of the Jonas Brothers or, or the Beebs, but like, um, yeah, I kind of sit in this like sad boy crooner music, you know? <laughs> That's kind of like popular nowadays, like the sad boy aesthetic. A lot of people like that, especially in like the indie world for sure and, and, and the irony is that this ep i have coming out is some of my happiest music i've, <laughs> I've written I and mean, i was like man 
I, I can sit in my emotions or like the whole world is sitting in their emotions. It's 2020. So like, I want to focus on something else. So I like literally wrote about almost anything else I could just so I didn't have to focus on what was happening. You know, yeah. was, is there like a specific song that you liked the most that you made or like that you would tell like people that haven't heard of you to listen to? I, I released an EP uh, last year called the East London EP where actually the year before that I went to London and wrote and record there for two months straight, which was awesome um, in the UK. And a song came out of that called Slow Right Down. And that's like, it's one of my favorite things I've done just because it's very much me. It's got this like soulful groove to it. It's stripped and mm -hmm. chill. And then I sing my ass off on the chorus. And it's just like one of my favorite things I've done. I think we need to slow right down. We gotta catch our breath somehow. So much that we can figure out. If only we can slow right down. makes it harder when we're so out of touch it's what's your like dream venue to play at dream venue i mean does wembley count your stadium is like i just i've seen so many like big bands play that on like in videos and i'm like man that would be that'd be the dream said like a lot of bands you know played there like what are some artists that you would say influence your style of music and inspire you sure yeah yeah i mean um i'm kind of all over the place i've, I've got um Back in college, I really got into the Talking Heads and David Byrne. I don't know if you know who that is, um, but David Byrne was the lead singer of that band, and they're just so everything he does is so unique. And his performing, he he's he's got a show right now. It's actually on Broadway, but it was what he toured with as his band, and it's like a fifteen piece band, and they're all um, wireless. The drummer is everything, walking around like a marching band, and it's all wireless and and playing these samples all like connected until so they're all moving around stage, and it's just it's just a really cool setup. That's why I love like Janelle Monet so much, just because her whole band is like the funkiest people you'll ever see. And they're all dancing their asses off and performing like really difficult music really well. And she, I think she writes and sings really great. You know, she was big for me. Uh, John Bellion, when he came out with that first record, was like really, really inspiring for me. What are some like lyrics or a lyric that you've written that you would say sticks, says a lot about your existence? and you find like the most relatable yeah uh i got an older song of mine uh that is um and there's it's also called carry you and it's uh the line is uh a trouble's gonna come like it always does but if you don't know struggle then you don't know love and Deep. i just think that's just <laughs> thanks man yeah, yeah thanks i wrote it uh, yeah yeah no um i should say i co-wrote that with a with a good friend of mine too but it's just that's just life right like you got to go through the shit so to to know why the good stuff's so good you know Trouble gonna come like it always does But if you don't know struggle Then you don't know love All they see is smoke And not the fire it's from Try to write our story Way before it's done What was the first song you ever recorded? And what was the last? And how did you feel about that trend? I don't know if I remember the first song I ever recorded. It was definitely in college. Um, and like, it, it's funny. I have, I've taken more music off the internet than I have on the internet right now, just because there was a time when I was like, oh, this is something I made. It must be great. And I'll put it on the internet. And then like, you look back a couple of years, you're like, oh man, I've gotten so much better. And that sounds like straight trash. Um, a lot of, a lot of artists go through that where they're, they think something's good, but then their sound changes and then yeah. they take down their old stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to it before anyone else could hear it. So that was good. <laughs> um, I think, you know, the ZP coming out is some of the most recent stuff I recorded. Um, and I loved it. It was actually really different for me because last year, the real whole reason the EP is called Songs I Found in the Year I Lost is because I, you know, had to kind of create a new way of, of songwriting recording for me because I couldn't be in the same room with people. So everything I did was on Zoom and use a lot of a, a software called Audio Movers where I could um hear my friends producing the tracks live no matter where they were like a friend of mine was in Liver liverpool england uh working on the track that i had i cut my, cut my vocals here in nashville i emailed to him we were zooming and he was sh sharing his screen and then he had audio movers so i could hear 
like him playing and recording guitar with like a three second delay. It was pretty, pretty crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. So the entire EP basically was um, written and recorded just like over Zoom. Can we just say what we mean? Tell me what you're really thinking about. Nobody likes this part at all. Can we forget all the small talk? It's been really hard for us with the pandemic. I think the virtual everyone's kind of getting used to it and it's really amazing that you've been able to record a whole ep like basically Thanks, over man. zoom yeah, yeah no, we, we did and there were some songs like you know like anything I, I wrote more songs than i ended up putting on the ep but like it was really cool and and i i think helped me even grow even more as an artist because you don't have the vibe of the room or someone in the room you can lean on you have to like i'm recording the stuff I, i'm you know uh, someone else is recording other parts but like i had to rely on myself even more than usual um and that was really really uh, enjoyable growing experience for me everyone thanks you so much for watching and for listening and go stream jeffrey's music thanks ben we can be we can be